If you're thinking about getting a heat pump, you might want to know what the difference between the hot water cop is and the central heating cop is, because they are usually combined as one figure. This video, we're going to be looking about what the differences are and how I've managed to separate them on my cozy heat pump. But more importantly, if you're wanting to become an Octopus Energy customer or get an Octopus Energy heat pump, even if you're not a customer, go to evnick.com forward slash energy, where there's up to a £150 up for grabs, £100 off a heat pump and £50 off joining Octopus Energy if you're not already a customer. Firstly, if you're an Octopus Energy customer already and have a heat pump off them, you're probably already aware that the Cozy app does not split the cop for the central heating circuit and the hot water circuit. So to do that, I've had to rely on the Octopus API and heatpumpenergymonitoring.org to split these two because the Octopus API integration is absolutely superb at reporting all this data and heat pump energy monitoring have a fantastic data for then splitting the cop based on what demand is going on. So with a bit of code, a bit of messing around, I've managed to split the cop from everything from Valentine's Day. So we have a bit of a uh, mix of data between February and March. Now, this means it's ha we've had fairly cold weather in both February and March. If we ignore the biannual two days of warmth we get here in England, but don't worry, there was lots of tea time alarms going off this time of year. So that means that the cop obviously was a bit colder because we were all drinking lots of tea to stay warm. Now, annoyingly, Octopus actually wiped all my early data. Now, I've had my heat pump from Octopus Energy installed from September 2024. There's a video up there, go and check that out of when it got installed, but they wiped all the data. So I've only got data up to about late January in the Octopus app, which shows a cup of uh, S cop of 3.06, meaning that I've lost a hell of a lot of data. I've only got up to January the 21st now onwards, and that's another reason why I've used heat pump energy monitoring because all that data is now stored on an external store from Octopus, which means it, it's not going to get wiped. Heat pump energy monitoring, I trust them very, very much to keep my data on their website secure and obviously for long-term monitoring. That means that all you guys can see it as well. And I, you can go on to over there. There's a link down below of where my data is. So you can view my data of my heat pump live all the time. Now my combined cop on heatpumpenergymonitoring.org is coming in at 3.15 cop, S cop. And that's for 35 days of data from when this was being recorded. And the central heating system that separated that out and that's coming in at 3.19. Now we already know that the hot water is going to be a lower cop based on the average of the central heating system being higher and my overall S cop being lower. But the central heating system is always going to be more efficient, but it's obviously going to be off in the summer, which is not the same for the hot water, which is before I tell you the hot water's cop, let me explain what's going to change throughout the year to the cop of the hot water, because there's a reason I'm not telling you until the end, because it's really important where you have to understand what's going to happen to it throughout the year. Now, as we approach the summer, the hot water being heated in the tank is going to get some benefits. First of all, it's going to get solar gains from the actual pipe work outside the run and also the run inside the loft. The atmosphere, the air is going to give it some solar gains. The water is naturally going to be warmer in those pipes. So therefore, the heat pump does not have to work as hard to get that water warm in the pipes because it's already warm and it's not losing a lot of heat on the flow in return. But it's also going to have warmer ambient air outside, which means there's a lot more heat for the heat pump to extract. So it's not going to be working as hard or using the compressor as hard to extract that heat out, which means it's going to rely on a higher cup as it's being worked. Now, I am not going to be using an immersion heater on my heat pump at all. Even with my vast amount of solar, you think that I would want to use some of that solar to use the immersion heater and heat the hot water. I'm going to tell you why that's actually a really bad idea. Now, if you only have solar, no batteries, or you're on fit, then a solar diverter for your immersion heater, yes, 100% fully agree, get it. it, it will benefit you. But if you are a modern person getting solar, maybe from evnick.com forward slash heatable, and it is going to include a battery storage system and or you have an electric car, you 100% do not want to be using your solar at the moment of recording this video to heat hot water because of a few reasons. Now, if you haven't got an electric vehicle, stick with me. There is another reason why you don't want to measure heater. But if you have got an electric vehicle, 
then there is a huge reason not to use a solar diverter immersion heater, and that is because EV owners can get access to Octopus Go Intelligent. Octopus Go Intelligent is the 7p electric rate at night for your car when your car's charging or when your car's not charging between half 11 and half five every single day. Heat your tank then, 7p. It's gonna cost absolutely next to nothing to heat the tank during that 7p hours, but mainly because any of the solar energy going back to the grid, at the moment, Octopus are paying 15p a kilowatt. So you're making more money exporting it back to the grid than you will be using it late at night. But if, if your argument is it's greener to use my own solar, well, it's not. At night, the, the grid is full of wind and abundant energy. Sometimes they have to turn off wind turbines because of the wasted energy. It's better to use that energy at night when nobody else is using it, nice and green, and export your power during the day when it might not be windy and the grid and factories and places are open that need that green power going back to the grid. It's one of the reasons Octopus are paying such high amounts for that energy going back because they only buy green energy. So if that green energy can go back to the grid when they actually need it, rather than at the you know, middle of the night you're consuming it then, it makes more sense from a green argument as well. So don't be sort of greenwashing yourself into thinking it's better to use your own solar. It really isn't sometimes. Now using an emergent heater, is only at best 100% efficient, at best. However, in my test, at worst, during cold months, your heat pump can transfer that energy to a 2.83% cop, that's 283% efficient. So you might as well drain your battery a little bit, use the heat pump and let the solar refill the battery, or just run the heat pump when there's lots of excess solar going back to the grid. It's much, much, much more efficient to heat the hot water using your heat pump than it is using an immersion heater. You're ba basically making the most of that power. And again, if you can get the Octopus Electric Vehicle tariffs or, cheap, or, or even the Cozy tariff, sometimes it's better to heat the water during those periods and let the excess solar go back to the grid at the 15p export rate that Octopus do pay. Now, there is some other caveats on maybe why you might wanna use some of the solar and an emergent heater, but I can't think of any. So if you use it this way, let me know why. Let me know why you might be changing after watching this video, why you might be changing your behavior, or even if you decided not to get an emergent heater after seeing this video, then let me know down below in the comments. But more importantly, if you're thinking of a heat pump from Octopus Energy, go to evnick.com forward slash energy where my Octopus referral code is for not only signing up to Octopus Energy, but also to get a heat pump. We split some money off there. You have to tell your energy advisor my code verbally or via email and they'll knock the £100 off your entire install. If you want to learn more about heat pumps, see this playlist down here. And if you want to see more about solar energy and battery storages and all that, then see these videos up here in the... In the, in the, in the, in the, in the